Choosing curriculum is a process. Does it feel like mission impossible to you? Breaking this down into multiple steps will help you to get through it. Over the years, I've discovered a few things that were not so helpful. So here's a list of don'ts in choosing curriculum that you can get out of the way right at the first. You, won't, you don't want to change your curriculum just because you just saw something that's new and glitzy and has all the bells and whistles. It may very well be an excellent material or a program, but don't rush in to changing to a new curriculum, curriculum without carefully reviewing it. It can be that your curriculum is actually an excellent tool in providing what you need to reach the vision and goals of your church. You also don't want to rush into changing your curriculum just because someone has complained that it's boring, it's hard to use, or it's just not fun. Unless the complaints are coming from a number of sources, it may simply reflect the opinion of someone who's not very happy with any choice. Or it may also be that the teacher needs further training or resources to improve their teaching. Sometimes that teacher may simply need to be placed in a different role better suited to their skills. The content may actually be excellent and additional resources would solve the problem for the student that needs a little more activity or a different teaching style. Another poor reason to rush into changing your curriculum is the mega church on the corner is using it and they're having great success. Beware, as in clothing, one size does not fit all. What fits your ministry may not be a good fit for theirs and what fits theirs may not be a good fit for yours. Also, success is not only measured in numbers, but must always be evaluated in the spiritual life of the learner. Are they growing in their relationship with Christ? Unfortunately, a ministry can be entertaining and popular, but have little real impact on the spiritual health of the participant. Another don't that I like to bring up at this point is don't be the Lone Ranger. Even if you like the idea of wearing the mask and riding away on the white horse. We need to share the responsibility and reap the benefit of several levels of evaluation through the eyes of different personalities, skill sets, and teaching styles. This will help you to achieve a better balanced decision from those who are actually using the materials. By giving your teaching staff and parents the opportunity to be a part of this decision, you also create ownership and commitment to making the best of your resources. You also can avoid having some people feel left out and possibly afraid of, resentful of, and resistant to change. When you are making changes, keep the congregation, especially those impacted by any change, informed about the process and the results. Remember, parents are the primary spiritual teachers of their children. Keep them in the loop. Here's another important don't. Don't rush it. This process needs to take time. Allow plenty of time to review and choose wisely. Get everyone on board with the changes that are coming and being a part of the process. That takes time as well. It takes time to order materials and to get them in house so they're ready to be used. And it also takes time to train people to use your materials. So be sure and allow plenty of time. I suggest beginning your process early in the spring so that materials can be in place in the fall, which is often the first semester of a teaching cycle. When considering vacation Bible school materials, most of these become available in late fall for the upcoming summer. You may want to put a reminder date on your calendar so time does not get away from you. Even though you're not considering changing curriculum, it may be helpful to do an annual review of the materials you are currently using to confirm that they are producing the results that you desire. You may also discover new resources have been added or developed which would enhance your ministry. 
For example, many publishers are developing online resources. Another very positive trend is the emphasis on the partnership between parents and teachers. With materials and resources to help parents continue the teaching of Sunday morning throughout the week with their family. Ongoing or additional training will help your staff continue to make the best of the materials you have and to keep the teaching fresh. Some good reasons to choose a new curriculum are, are the students' lives being impacted so as to bring them to spiritual maturity? If you realize that this is not happening using your current curriculum, it is very important that you find that curriculum that will meet this goal. Another reason to change is when there seems to be a consensus of opinion from your staff and families agreeing that the structure and format are not working with the curriculum that you have chosen. And importantly, the vision and goals of your ministry are not being met. You should have a clear vision and a goal set for your ministry and where it's going. And your curriculum is an important tool for meeting these goals. Just a few points of clarification. For the purposes of today's discussion, I will be specifically talking about choosing curriculum for an ongoing discipling ministry, such as a Sunday school setting. Many of these principles may also be applied to choosing individual curriculum, such as a book for a Bible study group. The Christian Education Ministries Board has set important guidelines for those materials and curricula that we endorse for our churches. We also provide a bookstore service. The materials are purchased through our distributors at a reduced price so we can pass the savings on to you. Any profit made on sales goes back into providing the best possible resources and training for our churches. All materials in our bookstore are in line with what we believe and teach as Reformed Presbyterians. They have been through a careful review process by our CE board and staff. You can trust them in what they teach and, and what they present. We are continually adding new resources. While there are many books and resources available, we simply cannot carry them all. We are happy to help you find the resources for your particular needs. Simply contact us at the Christian Education Offices. Of great importance to us are a right view and use and application of scripture, the do doctrinal integrity of the materials, a covenantal view of the church and the church family, and grace alone as the basis of our salvation. Currently, we endorse three curricular providers Great Commission's Publications, Christian Focus Publishers, and Christianity Explored. We also produce an adult curriculum, the Adult Quarterly, which is a six-year cycle study through the scriptures. It's available in a soft cover copy and as a downloadable format in EPUB with the teacher's guide. There are also a number of publishers whose materials are endorsed. A list of these is available on our home webpage. Many publishers offer good materials, but for one reason or another, fail to meet the full standards we have to receive a blanket endorsement. When you consider using one of these publications, please keep in mind the ability of your teachers to identify problematic areas and adapt the materials to teach a reform perspective. Ultimately, it's the responsibility of the session of your churches to approve the teaching ministry of the church. Great Commission's publications, for example, has a solid scriptural content. It's age-appropriate approach and its flexible approaches to suit both small and large congregations are a definite plus. Their youth Bible studies gives teens tools they need to build a worldview centered on Christ, and their scope and sequence is available online at www.gcp.org. We do not personally carry these materials here in our bookstore, but there is a link on our webpage where you can order the materials directly from Great Commission's publications. We also endorse Christian Focus. Their on-the-way curriculum is age-appropriate, 
it is very affordable and they give reproduction rights for their, their activity pages. They're, they have great lesson plans and preparation tips and they're diligent in teaching the Bible from teaching from the Bible rather than simply giving a children's message. Their material, materials are available for two and a half year olds to nine year olds. They also have materials for middle school and high schools. Another resource that we're proud to endorse is the Christianity Explored materials for youth and adults. This is an excellent series for teaching evangelism and outreach to our church members. This is a particular emphasis of our denomination at this time, and is always very important. Keep in mind, there is an advantage to choosing for your core teaching ministry a curriculum plan. It will provide a long-term sequential plan so that you have better balance and scope to your teaching that is often impossible through simply selecting individual materials in short series. It takes a great deal of planning and wisdom to produce a coherent, well-rounded discipling ministry using a buffet approach to materials. CEM has produced a guide for using the materials in our resource bookstore to teach believers from childhood to maturity, as well as a plan for adults who come to faith from new birth to maturity. We will offer a webinar on this plan and some of the individual materials and series we carry at a later date. Let's go and start looking at the do's in this process. The first step is to choose your team. Choose teachers from each age group that is affected. Recruit parents and ministry leaders. You may also choose CE committee members. Excuse me. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, interruption. Um, instill in your team members Sorry, we're having a little technical difficulty here. Um, instill in your team members a sense of ownership and the importance of their work in the discipling ministry of the church. Their recommendations will be valuable to the church session who approves teaching curriculum of our churches. The second step is to give them specific tools to help them to evaluate and choose the best curriculum for your church. Let's identify some of these key tools. A very important tool is a clearly identified vision purpose statement with measurable goals for the overall ministry of your church and for the specific ministry for which your curriculum is being chosen. Choosing curriculum without a vision statement is like taking a long trip without a travel plan and hoping you'll reach your destination. What is the purpose of the curriculum you are choosing? What should it accomplish in the lives of your students? How will you know that you have reached your goals? How does this material work together with the educational ministry of the church as a whole? And who are the students who will be taught? Are they covenant children, non-believers, new believers? What's the age group that you are reaching? And what's the maturity level of the believers? Who are your teachers and how will they be using this material? Are they aware of the vision, purpose, and goals you have in place and their role in reaching them? Another clear tool is a plan for the desired structure and format of your ministry. As your team is reviewing, it's important for them to understand the setting and purpose. Are you choosing materials for a Sunday school group with a traditional structure of a teacher leading it? Are you looking for materials that are self-led Bible discovery format, whereby the student uses learning centers or stations? Or perhaps you're interested in the large group, small group format for your curriculum. Identify the type of structure as to the scheduling, its setting, and the duration of the teaching venue. Is this a weekly Sunday school hour in a traditional classroom setting? 
or perhaps it's a community kids club with a mix of believers and non-believers? Is this a series for is this for a series of meetings such as a Bible study group? Or are you looking for an ongoing comprehensive teaching material? Obviously, the materials you select will be based on some of these factors. It's also important that for your team of evaluators, they have a basic understanding of key vocabulary in discussing curriculum. Review some of these key terms with your team. The curriculum is a part of a comprehensive teaching plan intended to bring the student into a mature, loving, joy-filled, and obedient relationship with Christ, grounded in the scriptures and equipped to every good work. The heart of a curriculum must be centered on the triune God and his relationship with his children. Curriculum not only includes teaching content, but may also offer teacher notes, class activities, handouts, take-home papers, music and worship suggestions, memory verse aids. It might include visual aids and catechism teaching suggestions, and more and more often, social media and IT support. A new and very positive trend is an emphasis on resources which partner parents and teachers to take the classroom teaching home to the families and apply it in their daily lives. Consider what resources you want in your curriculum package. Remember, setting all the bells and whistles aside, it must be centered on God and His Word and its impact on the life of the learner. Here are some other important terms that your team needs to understand. Scope is that aspect of the curriculum which provides teaching of the full truth and breadth of the gospel and scriptures. Sequence is the height and depth of your teaching. It lays a foundation and then builds precept upon precept so that it's ever helping the student to grow deeper and richer in their understanding and application of scripture to life. The cycle is the length of time dedicated to cover their key teachings. Most curricula have a two or three year cycle carefully planned to accomplish the presentation of key doctrines and theology and the full richness of the scriptures of Old and New Testament. The publisher can furnish this plan for your team to review. Please note, resist constantly changing curriculum midstream. Major truths, doctrines, and portions of scripture may be missed by this approach. Grading refers to the design of a curriculum for a particular age span. Narrowly graded materials may be age specific for one or two years, such as for first and second graders. A more broadly graded material may include teaching for first through fifth graders. Have an evaluation system that allows each team member to carefully review the materials. A guide or chart for reviewing and carrying the curriculum is a, for reviewing and comparing the curriculum is a key element in your toolkit. Using the same questions to review and then record their ob observations helps the team to compare the results of their reviews. A chart can be helpful which assigns valuations, such as a scale of one to five, as to how well the curriculum provides the review quality. These valuations can then be averaged to give an overall grade. You may want to consider giving more weight to certain aspects of the review. There are several styles of evaluation tools available. Some are more complex than others. We will be happy to help you find one that works for you and your team. Another do is to choose the curriculum publish publishers you're most interested in and then order sample copies of their materials for your team to review. Most of these are now available as downloads. And ideally, have your team evaluate at least two lessons from each age group of materials and any supplemental materials that you would like to use. Some online publications give you a pass for doing a limited time review of their materials without purchasing. They are often time sensitive, so you'll need to plan, plan well to get your reviews done. If possible, get enough copies for each reviewer or make sure the 
that they have access to the online samples. Whatever review or evaluation tool you choose, most valuation guides will cover three key areas of review. I'm indebted to John G. Curry as I am citing an evaluation guide that was first published by CRC. It has three key words that I find very useful. One is, is it faithful? Is it friendly? And is it fitting? While we don't have time to look at all aspects of a curriculum that may be reviewed, let's look at some of the key questions one may ask in each of these categories. Faithful. Is it biblically based, helping students to study, understand, and apply the scriptures to their lives? To their lives? Does it put the Bible in the hands of the teacher and the student? Does it follow sound principles in handling the scriptures? Does it present Bible stories accurately and the characters and events as historically accurate and real? Is it doctrinally sound according to our Reformed theology? Does it promote the use and memorization of the scriptures by both student and teacher? Does it use sound educational principles that utilize a variety of learning styles? You may also ask, does it provide for a full or a balanced teaching of Old and New Testament? Does it leave out or give little attention to some areas of scripture, theology, or doctrine while repeating others frequently? What is, the, what is its view of the church and family? Does it agree with our Reformed viewpoint and covenantal viewpoint? Does it give a clear presentation of salvation by grace alone through the gift of God and in the work of Jesus Christ? Does it tend to be moralistic in its application or legalistic? This is something we want to check very clearly in our area of faithful to our scriptures. The second key is friendly. Is it easy for the teachers to use, providing enough resources and ideas for fresh, engaging teaching, using a variety of teaching methods? Is it engaging to the student, not feeling dated and repetitive? Is it age appropriate in its content, its illustrations, and the activities it suggests? How about does it strengthen the family and aid the parents by connecting the teaching with home life? Does it offer resources for music, worship, service opportunities, and outreach? Is it inclusive to newcomers, inquirers, and visitors who we help, or who we hope will come to attend our church ministries? How is it as far as fitting? Does it fit your format and structure of your ministry? Is it doable in your space with your resources? In the time constraints that you have? Does it fit your budget allowances? And what about your staff? Does it utilize your staff well? Does it require a lot of staffing or a minimal staff? Is it sensitive to a multicultural, cosmopolitan, rural, urban setting? What is your situation? And do these materials work well for you? Once you have compared your views and prayerfully chosen the curriculum that best meets your needs, you will most probably need to get approval of the church session. So don't forget to allow time for this. Many publishers provide complete packages with all the materials for teaching, while others have additional helps and materials that must be ordered separately. Order early enough that the materials can be in-house well before they are needed, and be sure in order enough if they are time-sensitive materials. Another one of the do's is training. Your curriculum materials are only as good as the teachers who prepare and present them. Provide your teachers the training and support that they need to be successful and to enjoy the satisfaction of using their gifts well. If you cannot do the training yourself, we at CAM are available to help you. Contact us about planning for training. 
You might also consider asking the publishers if they have representatives who can come to your church or even meet through GoToMeeting or Skyping to present their materials and equip your teachers. A lot of times there are DVDs available and online training may also be available. There are good options out there, but I encourage you not to skip this very important last step. Congratulations. You have reached the most satisfying part of choosing and putting in place new curriculum, and that is impacting lives for Christ. If you have further questions or needs, please contact us here at CEM. It is our privilege to serve you. We want to thank you for joining our webinar today. We would appreciate your feedback and any input you may want to give us in providing the best training we can to meet your needs. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, and we look forward to serving you further.